Hi everyone, it's Ryan here back on the Syntax Byte, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use tween.js, the animation library that comes with CreateJS that I just covered in my recent series, but today we're going to use it with 3.js, a 3D rendering library. So the CreateJS suite itself uh, comes with easel.js, which is a 2D rendering library. However, uh, the tween.js uh, library that can be used for animation is also useful with 3.js and it can run your game loop for you as well as um, allow you to do some simple animations. So if you do want to use it with 3.js I'm going to show you how to in this quick video we're going to do a demonstration of a 3D animation. To get started with I just have a simple HTML file here. Um, nothing really too special it's got tween.js, just tween.js, not the full create.js library linked here as a CDN. I've also downloaded the 3.js script and added it in here after, and of course finally included my own game.js. We're going to follow the pattern like we used in the previous create.js videos. This is kind of a create.js uh, pattern if you look at uh, 3.js, their documentation doesn't use this pattern, but I do like it. Uh, so we're going to have an init function that's going to be called by our bodies on load and that allows us to put the script in the head rather than in the body. Um, you could put this initialization code outside of a function and then just put your scripts in, at the bottom of the body and that's what the 3JS documentation does. Either way will work um, and either way you can use tween.js. I'm just following this pattern. So to start off with, we want to actually write that function, which is init, and that's going to be called when our body uh, is initialized there. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to fire up a few things. So first of all, I'm going to need a variable called scene. I'm going to need a camera. Um, I'm going to need a renderer. Um, and I'm going to need a cube that I'm going to render. And I think our camera actually... Oh, my apologies. No, we do need the camera to be global um, because we will need to call it from our game loop. So all of these things will either be modified by tween.js or called uh, by, by the game loop there. So to get started, we're going to create a scene is new equal to new 3.scene. And then, of course, we're going to create a camera. 3.js comes with multiple different types of cameras, but in this case I'm going to do a 3 dot perspective camera uh, that is going to be 75 for the viewing uh, field of view. Um, then we're going to add the aspect ratio in there. I'm going to use a resolution of 640 by 480. You could do something different in the main documentation. They actually use the entire browser window, but I think for a simple demo like this that's a little excessive. So I'm just going to do 640 divided by 480. Of course, this is your width divided by your height. You'd rarely want to use a different aspect ratio than what you're actually going to have your canvas. Uh, 0 0.1 and then 1,000. So this 0 0.1 and 1,000 represent the near and then far clipping panes. So anything closer than 0 0.1 units um, to our camera uh, won't be rendered. It's, it's considered too close to the camera. Um, and then anything further away than a thousand units won't be rendered by the camera either. It's too far away. Next, we need to set up our renderer. So that's going to be renderer equals new 3.webgl renderer. So we use webgl. And then we will do a set size. This is where I'm going to set that resolution again. In the documentation, they actually use the whole browser. I think 640 by 480 is perfect for our little demo here. So I'm going to do that. And then you'll notice different with some other libraries. I would have, in other libraries, I often would have added the canvas here to my body, hard coded it in the HTML. In this case, I'm actually going to use, uh, do that from JavaScript. So I'm going to let 3.js. Uh, create the canvas uh, using JavaScript and then I'm going to append it to my body and of course you don't have to append it to the body you could append it to wherever is appropriate for your page but for this simple example this makes sense so it's just renderer.dom element next up we need to create something to actually display so we basically have everything we need to render a scene but we have nothing in our scene 
So we're going to create just a simple box, and then that's the box that we'll use to do our animations. So we'll create var geometry is equal to new three dot box geometry. I believe it has a default size of one by one by one, so we actually don't need to give it a size there. Var material is going to be equal to new three dot mesh basic material. This is a very simple material that doesn't actually respond to light. Um, so we can see it well, but if you add a light to your scene, you won't see any effect. Color, um, I'm using this 0x, so obviously hexadecimal, 93ccea color. It's like a blue color, and uh, yeah, Adam renders it there, so it's like a blue color. Perfect. And then finally, we'll take our geometry and material and put them into an object, which we've declared on the global scope. So I'll do cube equals new 3 dot mesh. Um, and then we give it the geometry, so that box there, and the material, um, and that will. So this controls how it looks. This controls the shape. Lastly, I'm simply just going to uh, add some. Make sure that the material can be rendered transparently. Um, so I'm going to do cube dot material uh, dot transparent equals true, and of course we'll have to modify the opacity, but that will ensure that when we do so, um, it appears transparent. Finally, I'll add it to the scene, scene.add cube. The last thing I will do is move our camera a little bit because by default, everything is at zero, zero, zero. Um, and so we won't be able to see it. So we need to move our camera back a little bit. I'm gonna do a camera.position.z is equal to five. Now, if we just move the Z position, we'll move it back from the cube so we'll be able to see the cube. However, that being said, um, it won't um, it won't really look 3D because we're looking at the cube straight on at one of its faces. Um, so to make sure that we can tell that it's actually a 3D cube, I'm just going to change the Y position to be equal to 1, 2, and that way we can see just a little bit of the top of the cube and just make sure that it looks 3D. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the CreateJS ticker. So this doesn't directly add any animation. This is just allowing CreateJS to run our game loop for us. So if you're kind of unfamiliar with 3.js or basically just game development in general, you need to continually uh, have on a loop a function basically to render the screen. In JavaScript, we use we can use request animation frame. Um, but we can actually use CreateJS's ticker to create tick events for us, and it will use request animation frame behind the scenes. So what we can do is CreateJS.Ticker.TimingMode equals CreateJS.Ticker.RAF. That stands for Request Animation Frame. We could also do RAF Synced, and that would try and sync to a specific frame rate, but I don't need that for this demo. Create js .ticker .add listener. We're going to listen for tick, and I'm going to have a function called animate, um, which is really just going to be our render function. From there, I want to create that function, function animate, and I want to render the scene. So I'm going to say renderer dot render scene with camera, and that should basically get our cube on the scene in a static position and we should be able to see it. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Now, um, in order to view WebGL content in most browsers, it won't let you do it just by opening the HTML file. So what I do is I have the Windows subsystem for Linux with Ubuntu here, um, but you could just use a Windows Python install as well. And I do Python 3, so just make sure you're using version 3. It might be Python or it might be Python 3 as in my case. Dash M HTTP dot server. We'll start up a simple local HTTP server. And we can go ahead and view that in our browser. So now if I refresh localhost 8000, uh, we see a black screen, but we don't actually see our cube. So let's see what's going on. Uh, CreateJS.Ticker.AddListener is not a function. And of course, my apologies, it is add event listener. Let's go ahead and try again. And there we go, we see our cube. So now, um, the scene is animating on a regular basis and we can see our cube and as I mentioned we move the camera up a little bit so it doesn't look, just look like a square we can tell that it's actually a 3d cube 
So now this is just static. Um, this is basically the 3JS introduction. Uh, but we want to actually add some animation to this cube using tween.js. So what we can do now is after we basically um, got everything going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the cube to uh, .material .opacity. I'm going to start it off as zero, so it's going to be fully transparent. I want to make it fully opaque. Then I want to spin it once, and then I want to make it fully transparent again. So this is going to be my animation sequence, just a simple animation sequence, and I want that to loop. So one of the things that I find when you're using tween.js with um, 3.js is that 3.js has a lot of these sort of properties, which are also um, objects themselves. So you have to do material dot opacity. Tween.js isn't really set up great for that. So you might have to use some weight functions to achieve the functionality you want. So we can start by changing the material, but then we can change the rotation as well. But those are going to have to be different tweens. And so we're going to have to just make sure that they line up. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we'll go create JS dot tween dot get cube dot material. And I'm going to do that on a loop is true dot two. So this is I'm taking this material and then this is where I'm going to specify the properties I'm going to transition to and how I'm going to transition to them. So remember, we set our opacity to zero. I want to go opacity to be one. I want to do that over half a second, so 500 milliseconds. I'm going to do it linearly, so I'm not going to specify any easing. We'll specify some easing on the rotation. Then I'm going to wait a second and a half, and then I'm going to go to back to opacity zero and I'm going to do that in the same speed. So why am I waiting a second and a half in that second and a half is where I'm going to actually rotate the cube. So now we can do create JS dot tween dot get cube dot rotation or yes sorry dot rotation. And same thing we're going to loop it. Dot we're going to start off with a wait here. So whereas here we were going dot two over 500 seconds, I'm going to wait that 500, not 500 seconds, 500 milliseconds. And then where we'll have our wait 1500, that's where I'm going to go and spin the cube an entire spin. So I'm going to do my Y rotation. So you can rotate on the X, Y, and Z axis. How you want to imagine rotation is you basically like to know what axis you want to turn on. You basically want to imagine that axis being a line through the cube and imagine it going through the so the the Y line is going to go vertically up and down. The X line is going to go like this side to side. And so that would turn it almost like front to back. And then uh, the Z line is going to go like that. So it would turn it front to back like the other way, um, if that makes sense. It would it would actually turn it like side to side. And then X would go front to back, Y would go side to like a full spin around sideways. So um, that's what we want to do. It also does rotation in radians. So I want to do math.pi times two for a full rotation. I'm going to do that over a course of a second and a half. And I'm going to use some easing. So I'm going to do create js dot ease dot get how in out and this is um, I'm going to use an exponent of three and basically what this is going to do is it's going to um, cause the cube to start off slow get fast and then go slow so you'll see how the rotation starts really slowly goes really fast and then goes really slowly you can mess around with the exponent to make the effect a little bit more drastic and then finally, we need to wait for our cube to fade in and out again. So we'll do a wait 500. And this is, of course, going to wait for it to fade out. And then this wait over here, because we're looping, um, will come back on uh, for the opacity coming in. So I'll go ahead and save it now. And now we should be able to see our cube uh, animating. And so we can see that. So it loops, it goes fully transparent comes back 
does a full spin and you can see how we have the easing on the spin like I mentioned the rotation starts off really slowly goes fast and then goes slow um, and then fades in fades out so this is just a simple example of how to achieve some 3d animation with tween.js and 3.js I hope you enjoyed it and I hope uh, it's something that you can build upon Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you guys want more CreateJS or 3JS content. And I will see you guys in the next video. I have a full written tutorial as well on my website with source code and the working demo of this uh, example. So be sure to check that out as well. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.